Hey everyone, it's Liz again. And Brandy, and we are back with your new release Wednesday, NSFW version. So guys, welcome back to the June 7th release. We're excited to be yes. here. We're excited to be back. Uh, this week we've got a very special guest. He is near and dear to my heart. I guess. I, I mean, you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's my husband, Rob Gibson. Yay! that one. That's mine. <laughs> I'm going to be talking she about it, she Batman later on. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> He's a man of many words. Do not let him fool you. I swear. Uh, so what's been going on in pop culture this week? We've had a couple of really yeah. crazy things happening. Uh, not the least of which to mention is Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. <laughs> uh, we'll be getting a whole Ooh. section on that later. Don't you fret. But that's going to have to be its own section. We got a lot We're to say about that. We're going to section for Wonder Woman. <laughs> Send me another video. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and let's see. What else is going on in pop culture? Let's see. Uh, TV. Have you been keeping up with Gotham at all? Um, yes. I have been loving Gotham right now. Uh, right now we have the season finale that has just dropped. I'm not going to talk to you about what's going on mm. there. But I will say, if you haven't been keeping up, you need to get on that before it is too late. It has been a really good season. We're talking court of owls. We're talking mysterious old man figures coming in and like mm. trying to control Bruce's life. I've really been enjoying it this season. It's yeah. been one of my favorite things, I think, to watch. Well, I just love the actors ensemble, just how they, they just mesh so well together. But yes, so the finale, man, you guys are it's going to be pretty epic. Uh-huh, and I will drop a slight spoiler. If you missed last week's episode, Fish is back. I have no idea where this is going. I have oh, I have no idea where this is going, but I have to know now. Fish is back. What is going on? So, Gotham, super stoked. Can't wait to see this one. I'm gonna show you the trailer for it right now. Here we go. As the flames of hedonism licked the very foundation of its society, Nero played and sang at the destruction of Troy. The Court of Owls caved away for the one who is to come. You're a killer. That's not who I am. <laughs> <laughs> who you are is a choice. <laughs> this is who I am. Hey everyone, it's Liz, and I'm going to be talking about The Mummy, which is coming out in theaters on June 9th. So, being that the movie hasn't been out yet, you kind of have to think, oh, is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Well, if y'all remember the original Mummy, like, which I actually really liked the original Mummy with Brendan Fraser, everyone kind of has already given this movie a lot of hate because they're like, well, who, needed, who asked for a reboot? Because, let's be serious, there's a lot of reboots of everything. Everything gets a reboot and I'm like things are getting a reboot and they've only been out a year and it's been you know So I understand the hate for reboots. However, I'm also another person who actually likes Tom Cruise a lot I Side stuff on his life. That's his life, but his acting I really really appreciate So the mummy is starting off the dark universe, which is gonna have like Dracula and I think Dorian Gray and pretty much all of the the obviously the mummy and it's it's Kind of like the MCU universe and the you know DC universe where they're going to try to make a bunch of movies about it. What I'm a little worried about with this is the marketing. So I'm one of those people that watches at max two trailers because the trailers kind of say everything. For this movie, the first few trailers were kind of boring and usually the same clips. So I watched more. The last trailer I saw pretty much told me the whole movie and I'm like, well, shit, I don't think they thought this through because now I kind of see what is going to happen in this movie. So I still want to go see it. I'm probably going to go see it in a Sunday matinee price or whatnot. But I think the mummy needs to be given a chance. And what I think that the director may have or the people who, who said it's not a reboot, it's not a reboot. Well, you know, when the mummy's sand face came out in the original mummy, that was awesome. When you do it again where something you didn't say is a reboot, it kind of screams reboot. So I, even though it's cool, I'm like, eh. I mean, the cast looks amazing, the effects look amazing, the locations looked really good. So, I mean, give it a chance. I, I just, just an opinion, guys. But, um, yeah, Mummy, June 9th, it, hopefully this, this doesn't flop so we, don't, we can see more of the Dark Universe. 
But if this movie doesn't do very well, I don't see it going really anywhere. But who knows? It isn't out yet, so give it a chance. So, all right, guys, on to the next one. All right, this is Rob, so I want to caveat on the Batman 24, but while we're talking about all the stuff that's that's pop culture related, I found that this really helps me make sense of Gotham for all of you that haven't been following along. You can find it on Hulu, and I highly recommend it with your battle buddy right here. So today, news articles across, uh, I think actually it's the stem with USA Today, completely spoiled, where Batman 24 was set to go after two, stand, uh, two issues doing their own thing, tying into the button 21 and 22, and 23 being the funniest title ever, The Brave and the Mold, where Swamp Thing cameos in the, with Batman, which is just phenomenal, is, is outstanding. They go and just completely spoil what the heck is going on with this latest book. Now, we got The War of Jokes and Riddles coming on. It's by Tom King, who, again, if, you, if you're not familiar with the guy, he left the CIA to write comic books. And following Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's kind of a tall task on Batman. And he's done it, and he's knocked it out of the park, and he's been doing two issues a month. Furthermore, and you can pick them all up, paint of visions, they've got the trade collected there, they've got the individual issues. But to go and use, I don't think this was, was Tom, so I don't want to come across like I'm insulting him, but the sales boost tactic where a day before the book is released, HQ decides willingly that they're going to share what the hell is going on in the book is one of the most insulting fucking things that I think a publisher can do. And this is not Neckbeard the Bitter trying to just come across like some whining little bitch on the internet, because I know there's a lot of us out there. But when you look at Captain America 25 and Brubaker killed him right after the Civil War, Fantastic Four 587 with Johnny Storm. Not like anyone gave a shit about Johnny Storm, but all the fucking same. Is that something that needed to be spoiled the day fucking before the comic comes out? Fuck you. The Walking Dead, at the very least, that 167, had the courtesy to at least say, we have spoilers for the preview. Don't look at this. We have spoilers. We have spoilers. Like, there's the courtesy there that Robert Kirkman and Image are just vastly superior to Marvel and DC with what they're doing. And I understand that it gives a sales boost with these um, with these stories that the mainstream media might think, you know, draws in more fans that they don't have. This is consistently one of the highest selling books that DC's had since at least the New 52 has kicked off in October of 2011. And even with the new creative team, it's still one of the consistently high selling books and best quality. So I get it. They're trying to sell more. They're trying to make sure that that they're trying to beat the hell out of a dead horse. And I'm looking at this and I'm addressing them the exact same way that I do my dogs. And I love my dogs and I would die for my dogs. I'm probably going to die because of my six-year-old litter mates. But no, damn it, bad, shame on you. Grow the fuck up. Stupid. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. Oh, hi, I'm Brandy and I'm here to talk to you about Beauty and the Beast. Now, if you're like me and you haven't caught it yet, this is a great week because it's dropping on DVD and now is your chance to pick it up. I was a little skeptical when this movie was first coming out. Not that I don't love Beauty and the Beast, but I always get nervous when there's a remake of something because inevitably it is not what it was when you saw it initially. And let's be real, who can compete with animated Disney? I mean, that's what I grew up with as a kid. I don't know about you, but that was one of my favorite movies and I'm gonna be dating myself now. But I saw it in theaters. So to think that we're having this new movie come out now and it's going to be live action, I was a little skeptical. But honestly, after seeing some of the reviews and looking at a lot of the screen stills, I'm super excited to actually be able to sit down and watch it, not only in the comfort of my own home, but maybe with an alcoholic beverage in hand as well. So. Right now, I am, I am really excited because of uh, the cast. I didn't realize how many great actors were in this. Um, so much so that I'm going to be using my handy dandy teleprompter right here. Because, uh, you know, we had Emma Watson, who is Harry Potter fame. She's been around forever. She's gorgeous. She's really grown up on screen. Getting to see her in something now where she's really coming into her own as she's an adult. I think is going to be awesome. So if you've already seen this, you can let me know what you think in, in the comments on this video. Uh, but let's also not forget about people like Dan Stevens, who's one of those actors where I love because you listen to him speak in real life and it's not how he sounds on film. He can do accents out the wazoo. And if you have not been checking him out on Legion, what a fucking difference. Oh my God. He does amazing on that show. So I'm... I'm actually really excited to see what kind of a different personality and character he brings to the Beast. But you're also talking about people like Luke Evans, Josh Gad. 
Holy shit, Ian McCullen. Be still my heart. Um, and of course, Emma Thompson, who has been in all kinds of kids' movies. Uh, she's been in some serious things as well, like Wit. So she brings, uh, I think with a couple others, just this really well-balanced cast. Uh, I've also seen a couple bits and pieces there that have made me laugh. We can't forget about the controversy of what was the two variants on the Emma Watson Bell doll, the first one that got a lot of hate. It was looking terrible. She looked kind of busted. It was really, it was not a very attractive doll. The second one I have seen in person, it looks much better. Uh, and then those stills that we've been seeing from uh, Beauty and the Beast where you have Dan Stevens in the suit with the bits and pieces on for CGI and it totally takes the romance out of the entire thing. Not that I wouldn't try and romance Dan Stevens. Sorry, honey. I love you. He is an attractive man. Uh, my husband is attractive, too. I'm, I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh... But yeah, like there's just so much I, I didn't realize was going into this movie. So I'm actually really looking forward to hopefully coercing said very attractive husband to sit down and watch it with me. Uh, I think if I taunt him with a little bit of shoulder, a little bit of booze, maybe he'll he'll be willing to sit down and see it with me. But yeah, so I'm excited. You should post below. Tell me what you thought. Thanks. Uh, on to the next one. Hey everyone, it's Liz, and this is my top three picks. So everyone knows I'm a huge Marvel nut, like I'm actually the biggest fangirl on, on the earth. And one of the um, comics that I'm really looking forward to, oh, well, movies also, is Spider-Man Homecoming, which is AKA Iron Man 4, um, that they have prelude comics. So if you don't know, Marvel does a little prelude to their movies, a comic, and that you kind of get that little side story right before the movie starts and I, I've been collecting all of them. So Spider-Man Homecoming is obviously getting one and it's by Will Pilgrim, Matt Fraction, and Stan Lee. And I'm excited to kind of see right after Civil War how Spider-Man kind of reacts to everything seeing that oh I was on Iron Man's side but you know there really was no good or bad side on this so I'm kind of hoping to see that that relationship with Tony Stark and kind of being that the dad son moments because the trailers obviously obviously show that Tony Stark is kind of the father figure for um, Spider-Man. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to um, the Star Wars Darth Vader. <laughs> so I grew up on Star Wars. That was my childhood. So when we lived, my parents were in the military. So when we lived overseas, um, we had VHS tapes of the original Star Wars and we played a hell out of them because everything was in German, you know, because we were over there and we were like only English. We had Star Wars. So. Um, Charles Sewell, Sewell, Charles Sewell is making Darth Vader, and Darth Darth Vader to me is one of those very difficult villains because in the end he wasn't really a villain. He never really did go to the dark side all the way because of course he had to save his kid at the end. So with this Darth Vader number one, I'm kind of really excited to kind of see his journey because it's right after like he's he's he's. His journey is Darth Vader to get to his point. And Darth Vader for me is like with Rogue One, when he comes out with his lightsaber, I'm like, it's so cool to see him prior to our original Star Wars and how he was and why people were so freaking scared of him. Because you see him in the original movies, you're like, yeah, obviously he's a villain, but to kind of see the evolution of how the world, the universes were like quiver at the name of Darth Vader is really exciting. All right, on to my third pick, which is really my number one pick, is Wonder Woman. Come on. It's Wonder Woman. So Wonder Woman, Steve Trevor, which is done by Tim Seeley. Yeah, Tim Seeley. So he um, is best known, I believe it's a G.I. Joe. Yeah. Yeah, so G.I. Joe. So I was a lot of comics I read as a, a kid. So I'm really, I've read some of, a lot of his old G.I. Joe stuff. So I'm really excited to see what he does with Steve Trevor because I really enjoyed the relationship between Wonder Woman and Steve in the film because even though he was a sidekick and he wasn't that he wasn't the one in charge they were a wonderful pairing and they worked really well together so I'm kind of excited to see like this is the journey from when she saved him and how the background relationship that you don't really I guess don't really see in the movies so or in the movie so I'm really excited to pick this one up I'm like gonna go pick it up actually as soon as I can so those are my three picks. So put in the comments what your three picks are because I'm really curious. All right.
Hey, what's going on? This is Rob Gibson, and these are my top three with new release Wednesday from 7 June. Starting off, Jessica Jones, issue 9, by, uh, by the old team that brought us Alias Investigations back in, I think it was 02 through 05 time frame. Brian Michael Bendis, uh, Michael Gatos with covers by the Eisner-nominated American sweetheart, David Mack. David, I hope you win the Eisner this year for best cover artist, buddy. <clears throat> when these two, when Brian doesn't have to tell an ensemble story, I think he's at his finest. And some of his stuff, his new Avengers, man, when he's got the guys going back and forth, when he's got the team going back and forth, it's a beauty to behold. But when you look and see what he does with one-on-one -on -one character work between stuff on Powers, Daredevil, uh, and especially Alias, it's no wonder that Marvel looked at his stuff and said, you're the guy that we need to build our TV series from. So this is the same character that Jessica Ritter uh, does on Netflix, a.k.a. Jessica Jones. I don't think the TV show lived up to the books I thought there was stuff from the books that wasn't explored. It's still a great TV show. And don't even get me started on the ways to <laughs> Iron Fist and how awful that is. But let's just say that I'm really excited to see him back doing Jessica as her own main character. When he came back to this a couple uh, months ago, an outstanding story, unpredictable, completely putting friction with her marriage with Luke Cage and their daughter, Danielle. It's phenomenal. Issue 9 is going to be going into the backstory of another Brian Michael Bendis character that he curated. Maria Hill, you know her as Colby Smulders from uh, The Avengers um, and all the other stuff that she's been in. And Robin, right? Yes, and she's doing awesome. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to pick that up. Next one is Batman 24, but you've already heard all my irritable bowel syndrome. Um, you, you know exactly what's going on in the damn book. Tom King has been consistently knocking out of the park. It's nice to see a DC native just... just owning the hell out of the comic industry. Tom, wish you nothing but the best, and I promise I will be throwing my money at everything that you are putting out. Can't wait to read the next Sheriff of Babylon trade while we're at it. And the, you know, is that Big Barda and and her BFF husband, whatever. The, Miracle Man. Miracle Man. All right, all right. If Tom King's name is attached to the book, you should be buying it. It is a good use of your money. The third book that I'm looking forward to is The Dark Knight Master Race number nine by Brian Azzarello. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Frank Miller himself, with art by uh, Andy Kubert. Uh, <clears throat> shoot, who's the Jensen? Uh, um, Carl, Carl, Carl Jensen. Carl Klaus Jensen. Jensen. Thank you. Klaus Jensen. And I know Frank's going to be on the, the back of art with that. And the reason it's one of my picks is because it's a Batman story that hasn't been goddamn spoiled by USA Weekly. So, those are my top three from Rob. Y'all have a wonderful June 7th. Hey guys, Brandy again, and I want to be anti IP when I grow up. So my top three picks for the week are a little diverse. We've got some Marvel, we've got some DC, and we've got a little bit of something else. Starting off, let's talk Harley 21. If you guys have not been catching up with Jimmy Palmiani and Amanda Connors' Harley Quinn, you have got to stop what you're doing and go get this now. There's enough that has been out that you have a plethora to choose from. Jimmy and Amanda, if you don't know any backstory on them, have been a couple for longer than I can remember, and they just know each other so well at this point. They play off of each other, the wit, the banter, just knowing how to really bring a character to life, give them that little bit of realism that you need. I mean, it's fantastic. And if you've met them at conventions, which they are at conventions all the time, they're fantastic human beings. So... Uh, Harley Quinn 21 is starting off a series, uh, not series, a storyline called Red Rose Part 1. So in this, you've got Red Tool, uh, hint, hint, Deadpool, who is in love with Harley, and she's really not trying to give him the time of day. Um, but, you know, she's doing her thing, living um, out near Coney Island in this building where she's got her animal menagerie and everything else going on. Um, and we see this character come in who is old friends with her. And she is Jenna Duffy. Um, so she goes by the carpenter. But things are not going so well. It's not, they're not clicking like they should because she's really afraid that Harley is out to just get her and keep her from scoring the biggest heist of her life. So... I won't get into much more than that because this is starting a little new bit of a storyline, but you should check out, read up to what you can now of Harley Quinn by Amanda and Jimmy, and you're going to enjoy it. Uh, my top pick, number two, is Iceman by Cena Grace. 
So what we've been seeing right now from Iceman in X-Men comics up till now is that he's kind of experiencing what a lot of us are. He's going through and not able to always be himself. And who, who hasn't kind of wished in another life that they could change and say, man, well, what if I could have done this? And what if I could have done that? And if you haven't been around, Bobby has come out as gay. He's been kind of called out on that in a, in a previous issue. And so he's having to deal with, you know, how do I, how do I show that I'm out and not have people's opinion of me change? So at this point, we're seeing in Iceman number one, uh, a time lapse, Bobby comes in and he sees a version, a younger version of himself. And this guy's got it all together. He is a hero. He's got his shit together. He uh, is in a relationship. Not only is he out and doing what he wants to, but he's in a relationship. And so Bobby's kind of looking at it and thinking, man, <laughs> Why can't I have my life like that right now? So it's him going through and really trying to figure out how he can be the best version of himself. So Iceman, number one, Cena Grace. And for my last pick, um, I really wasn't quite sure I wanted to do this one, but honestly, after the experience that I had in seeing Wonder Woman in theaters, I kind of had to bring this to you. So Nancy Holder has basically written the comic version of what we saw in movie theaters. And the reason why I feel like this is really important is because of the experience that I had. I sat there in a movie theater and for the first 35 minutes was pissed. Not at the movie itself, but the fact that there was a family behind me who honestly just would not shut up. The entire time they were going on and on and it was driving me nuts and I kept looking over my shoulder, you know, like you do passive aggressively because you don't want to start shit in a theater. But halfway through, I realized what was going on. The family behind me did not speak English except for the father and the entire time he is going through and translating what he's seeing on screen so that his little girls can appreciate what they're seeing and understand and really get into the story of Wonder Woman and so I think having something like this is super important because when you're in theaters you're not getting those various languages you you're not being able to break those boundaries and so to have a written script that is going to be produced in multiple languages that everybody can understand so everybody can appreciate I think is absolutely amazing and I felt like a jackass for a half second and afterwards my heart just filled because other people were able to enjoy what they would not have been able to previously so go check out Wonder Woman Nancy Holder the screen adaptation in comic book form and those are my top three picks all right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us for our June 7th new release Wednesday. We've loved talking with you. Uh, special thanks to Rob for yeah. coming and giving his IBS special. Uh, he always has some really that great things That would have been so much better if I said irritable vowel syndrome. So I'll <laughs> remember that for the next one. All right. Yeah. You probably didn't hear it at first, but I'm just, that'll, be, that'll be my thing. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Uh, next week, we're going to be coming to you from Painted Visions, uh, which is in Woodbridge, Virginia, with a special guest that week, Adam Martin again. We love Adam. I love you. We <laughs> still Watching love Adam. <laughs> um, and I think that Patrick has something that he would like yes, to add in here as well. Hey, y'all. Thank y'all for checking out. We're, we're checking us out. We're back. New release Wednesday. Love these guys. Liz, Brandy, Rob. Great people. Um, coming up soon, Awesome Con. Yeah. The week after next, we'll have one more episode before this drops. Um, check this out at Awesome Con. I'll have two panels. Um, I can be a hero too for cost love and co cosplay and community service with my cost love guys. Awesome. And then also, I'm a totally awesome Asian, right? Totally awesome Asians doing our Asian American Pacific Islander salute to the contributions we've done in pop culture. Check that out. And then these cats are going to Heroes yeah, Con. Yeah, we get to go to Heroes Con in Charlotte, North Carolina. So unfortunately, you won't see us at Awesome Con. But these guys will be there for you to hang out with. But if you're going to be in Charlotte, North Carolina, come see us. We'll be walking around. We'd love to do some interviews with some of you guys. Yeah. Get you on the show. Get a little bit of feedback from you. Um, and really just looking forward to hanging out with some artists and some great writers. And Awesome Con is yeah. a developing convention. And we've been going since the inaugural year and very happy 
for what they're doing. Amazing. Great stuff. shows. I can't it's, believe it's on the same it's, weekend. It's, it's one of those cool. last last year was Baltimore and Dragon Con was the same weekend. Yeah. It is a damn shame when the same coast has two incredible cons going at the same time. Right. Yeah. You can't match heroes. But you know what? We're gonna get but, you great content from Heroes Con. Absolutely. We're gonna give you great content from Oscon. A lot of great stuff coming on. I'm just gonna be in line all Sunday to see Stan Lee, so don't talk to me. I'll be in line <laughs> just staring at Stan Lee. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna be doing. You got twelve thousand uh, followers, you're gonna be the most sought out after all of us. Uh, I'll be in line on Sunday, all day. <laughs> She's gonna be a true believer. <laughs> Someone just push her stuff you know to stand. Before we go, tell them where they can right find now. this on Twitter. Oh, where can yeah. you be found at? Find on Twitter. On Twitter? Twitter oh, handle? my Twitter is Liz Gamaz, or Elizabeth Gamaz now. So it's just my first name and last name, no spaces. So you can find me there on Twitter. Twitter is guys? At Gibbasaurus. Give a source. I'll let you figure out the spelling. <laughs> right now. Brandy? And I'm old and don't Twitter. <laughs> She's going to be our official at the NRW person. <laughs> T-H-E-N-R-W. How do Twitter. I technology? I don't know. I'm at Temple Far East. You are watching New Release Wednesday. Brandy, Liz, Rob. Yep. I'm, why am I signing off? This is your show now. I know. Go away. Thank you. Go. <laughs> Pass the mantle. Can we, can we just... Pass the mantle. Go I know. Away. Go away and buy me alcohol. All right, guys. Bye Thank now. you. Bye. <laughs>